Hi everyone, it's Kirk and Michael for a unscheduled rundown, right? Kind of an impromptu rundown. It is. It was uh, last minute. We decided we really needed to do this rundown. In fact, we have one almost ready to go that we're going to hold and throw this one out in front so mm -hmm. they make it to back to back pretty quickly. Yep. Um, it, what motivated this one is two things, Michael. Um, th it, it's that we have our upcoming client event that's going to be coming that is centered around charitable giving. Mm -hmm. And we are coming towards the end of the year uh, where there's a number of people that still haven't executed some of their charitable giving they're supposed to get, do this year. Mm -hmm. And we want to give a basic rundown of, maybe more than a basic, of how these different charitable strategies work, why we're utilizing them from a tax perspective, and why some of you are really struggling to that have these strategies actually utilize these strategies. And the problem from an IRS perspective, like serious IRS issue if we don't start figuring this out. Right, and, and before we jump into the nuts and the bolts of how these strategies work and how the tax benefits work, I do wanna spend some time on the behavioral side first. Because this is to your point, we're seeing when we're building plans for people and we're including charitable components because they want to be more charitable, yes. we're seeing people struggle to, it's one thing to build the plan and to put the dollars in a DAF or to earmark money for QCDs. We'll talk about this stuff in a second. It's another thing for the people to actually give the money away. And we're finding people struggle with that when, it, when push comes to shove and the plan says, okay, this year you're supposed to donate out of your RMD you have to take, you're supposed to donate $15,000. And people sometimes start to balk because they go, oh, wait a minute, that's, you know, I know I agreed on that, I know it's what I want to do, but boy, it sounds like a big number. Is that going to be okay? And it's, it's a behavioral thing almost. Well, yeah, y yes, Michael. And the other piece is like on the donor advice fund where they've already given the money to charity. It's already in charity. They right. can't take it back. You can't change your mind. But then once it gets there, to get them to give it away is very, very challenging. Again, often behavioral, mm -hmm. sometimes out of sight, out of mind. And For it's one sure. of the reasons why we For have sure. the client event. So, the, so, so, Michael, before we go too far, I want to make sure people who don't currently have charitable strategies in their retirement plans at all right now, don't, uh, don't stop watching. Um, you will be surprised. It's probably our number one or number two most common changes, plan updates that we have to make adjustments for mm -hmm. with plans where people have inherited money, um, or legacy was never a priority, but they didn't use charities or give charities while they were alive because they just thought, I'll wait until I'm gone and then I'll give it all to charity. Mm -hmm. Partially because they're anxious and fearful about living their money. And after a little time with us, they recognize, oh, this plan is not going to fail. Yes. It's going to work. It's, it's bulletproof. Um, I should really be getting some of the tax benefits while I'm alive and seeing the value of the, what my dollars are giving to charity while I'm alive so I can be a part of it as opposed to waiting until I'm dead. 100%. So don't bail on us, stick around. It's interesting information and it's gonna teach you some really important uh, rules and strategies around charitable giving. Good? For sure. Okay, Michael, jump in. So let's just start with tax basics for a second Yes. Here. In terms of when you're filing taxes, there's, two, there's essentially two choices here itemize or standard deduction. Correct. With the new tax law changes, they're not that new anymore. Uh, with the t current tax laws, most people take the standard deduction. Michael, go, let, me, let me interrupt. I'll tell you why most people are taking the, he's smiling because I interrupted him again, <laughs> um, the standard deduction. Yep. It's because today, if you're 65 years old and married, so you're married filing joint and you're 65 years old, between your standard deductions and your elderly deductions, the government is giving you approximately $30,000 a year for free. The mm -hmm. first $30,000 of income you earn, you pay no taxes on, right, right, Michael? Exactly. So that's why the majority of people today are not itemizing anymore. Because in order to itemize, you have to be itemizing over $30,000 of itemizations. And most people just don't have $30,000 or more of itemizations. Especially with SALT, which you won't get into. But, right. But with the SALT the, the, uh, rules, 
most doesn't, people it doesn't happen very often. It's like Meaning. ninety. It's like over ninety-five. It's almost ninety-six percent of baby boomers retirees do not itemize anymore. Right. Meaning, if someone's donating a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars per year to charity, if they're not itemizing, they get zero tax benefits. And I know people who are being charitable, the tax benefits are not the point. But if we're going to be donating that much money for the rest of your lives, let's be efficient about it. So, so Michael, now those who may actually be able to itemize um the disconnect for people is they i itemize mm-hmm. my itemized thirty six thousand dollars last year okay that's great but the government gave you the first thirty thousand so all you really right. did was get an additional six thousand dollars of a deduction mm-hmm. and then when we go look through the taxes and we realize wait a second you're giving twenty thousand dollars a year to charity you're, you're only getting 6000 of the $20,000 to deduct. Right. If you did it properly utilizing the strategies we use for most many of you, they could have all of the $20,000 deducted plus the $30,000 the give, government gives them. So now $50,000 comes off of their entire adjusted gross income. And I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but <laughs> now we're pulling levers, right? Because now a greater percentage of our Social Security, a, less, a smaller percentage of our Social Security will be taxable, right? Now that we have the 30 plus the 20 deduction, mm-hmm. now lesser percentage of our Social Security is uh, uh, taxable. For many of our clients, it then ultimately throws them into a 12% bracket, which means none of their dividends and capital gains are taxable. And for many of our clients, this also helps manage the costs of Medicare especially when a spouse dies, because it's means tested. Based on AGI, exactly. And so this is, there's a, there's a disconnect, like you said, between people thinking, you know, if I give cash to a charity, that'll help my taxes. In most cases, the answer is no. And even if you are itemizing, it's probably not as efficient as it could be. So let's talk about the main strategies that we use yes. in terms of uh, charitable planning. Great. So the first one, donor advised fund. You'll see it in your plan as DAF, D-A-F. We shorten it to DAF. These are getting really popular, which is I'm, I'm glad to see because they're very powerful strategies. It's just got to be used properly in a plan though. Yeah, I think $30 billion, estimated $30 billion went into DAFs nationally mm-hmm. this past year. Very popular strategy. And the IRS knows this is a popular strategy and, and, and we're going to teach you about the strategy. I'm going to tell them right up front. One of the reasons why we keep bringing um, uh, different causes to our client appreciation event is because many of you are struggling to give out of your donor advice funds and to give your QCDs and donate the way the plan calls for and what the IRS requires you to really requires you to do. Mm -hmm. So the IRS has sent out many notifications over the past several years noticing that donor advice funds are becoming much more popular. And while they're in full support and there's no problem with the strategy, they are concerned and paying attention for those people using these tools as simply a tax avoidance instrument. So their expectation, their want, their desire, what they're looking for is activity with your donor advice funds, meaning you put money in a charitable savings account, the donor advice fund, they wanna make sure money is going to charity out of that account on a regular basis, not just sitting there for generations avoiding taxes. Right, and so let's wind back that's, a step. That, that's why, we're ha- why we keep having these events and bringing these causes. At 100%, so in terms of well, the DAF. only reason, but a major reason. Donor advised funds, let's just assume someone's donating $5,000 per year to charity and they're not itemizing so they're getting no tax benefits for it. Right. Instead of giving $5,000 per year to charity, we might have them donate- 60. Uh, uh, $100,000 of highly appreciated stock or cash something into a donor advised fund. By putting in the donor advised fund, if it's highly appreciated stock, they number one, do not pay taxes on the capital gains on that stock. So I want to back up really quickly and I want you to keep going, but I want to make sure not everyone understands highly appreciated stock, meaning you have investments that you bought and held, not in retirement accounts, that have gone up in value a lot. This could be also real estate, it could Mm -hmm. be building, it could be businesses. Anything that you own that's gone up a lot in value that you're gonna have to pay a lot of taxes on, we can, you can, and we do donate to a donor advised fund. As a result, we don't have to pay any of the taxes on all of that appreciation. 
And we also, in that year, get a big tax deduction. All of it. To offset other capital gains, to offset Roth conversions, to do really good tax planning. And so now, instead of donating $5,000 per year of your after-tax money getting no tax benefits, now, like Kirk mentioned, you have an, it's almost like a charitable savings account. That's what it you is. You have a pot of money that you got a big tax deduction for, so you can give to charities out of that account for the rest of your life. You can give, I'll, I'll stick with the $100,000 number. You can give the whole $100,000 in one year. You can give five grand for 20 years, 10 grand for 10 years. It's up to you how you give it. It is flexible, but to Kirk's point, if someone got a, a big deduction and then they haven't given a penny of that money to charity for one, two, three years, the IRS starts to get antsy about that because you've got a big tax deduction and you've not given a penny to charity. Can't or, be just tax avoidance. Honestly, if it's less than 5%-ish of distributions per year, so if, if someone has a $100,000 DAF and they're giving 500 bucks a year to charity, that's not going to move the needle. It's got to be a decent size. I'm glad you said that. It is not an accident on our client event in the charitable registration so people can make donations. There's minimums there. Mm -hmm. It's not an accident, those minimums. We're trying to IRS proof you. We're trying to keep you out of trouble. There's a reason we're putting minimums on there so you're at least hitting the minimums that you really should be sending, right? Mm -hmm. So Michael, I want to make sure, and I know we're spending a lot of time on DAFs because it's probably the, one of the more it's probably one of the most popular strategies we use. It is. Honestly, yep. I'm guessing 60% of our clients have donor advice funds mm -hmm. in that range. Yep. It's a lot. Uh, we have over $70 million earmarked to, for charity through charitable strategies from our clients. It's a remarkable amount of numbers. Some I know we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. The donor advice fund is essentially allowing you to bunch whatever you plan to give over an extended period of time and give it all and put it in one account up front. And by doing that, that big large number is much greater than your item, I mean your uh, your standard deduction that the government automati automatically gives you, right? Right. So if the government, if you're married, finally joined, is giving you the first 30 and you donate 100, now I'm well exceeding what the government's giving us and I get to use or we get to use, you get to use that $100,000 to offset any other taxable issues that we need to resolve within your plan, which could be I have other stocks that are highly appreciated, investments that are really up in value that we want to liquidate and sell. That's why we force liquidation of things sometimes and people get frustrated, but it's, it's the right time, the right place. It also helps us to offset some of our Roth conversion strategies, which is then, it, it's a domino effect. It's a huge domino effect. Every time we say it dominoes throughout your lifetime and all the different things that you're going to receive money from, it m helps to manage the taxes and minimizes the taxes. Great strategy. Um, I wish more people utilize them. It's something the a very wealthy of use for many years. That one to ten million dollar families just doesn't have. They don't have advisors that are sophisticated enough or willing or able to spend the amount of time to utilize them effectively. So they're not using. That's why it takes a sixty to hundred hours to build a plan. Yeah, but, I mean, charitable planning always adds a good ten to twenty hours of planning onto a plan. So let's talk about the next strategy, QCDs. Yes. So QCD stands for Qualified <coughs> Charitable Distribution, QCD. Now, disclaimer here, you are not, under current tax laws, you are not allowed to do QCDs until you are 70 and a half. That's right, can't start doing the strategy until you're 70 and a half. So that being said, what a QCD is, is sending money directly from an IRA to the charity. Now, hear me on that phrase. Better it hear is this. very important. Yep. It has to go from the IRA, skip your bank account in the middle, and go directly to the charity. If someone takes money from their IRA and puts it in their bank, and then it goes from their bank to the charity, that's taxable income. That, that doesn't does work. That does not work. It's got to go from the IRA, skip the bank account, go to the charity directly. We have to facilitate that for you. Yes. That is a big misconception of people thinking, well, Michael, you know, I got the money from my Fidelity IRA, then I gave it to the charity. No. It's a QCD. No, it's I tell not. Them, no, it's not. You're paying taxes on that money. Right. See, here's why the QCDs are so important, uh, particularly in our planning. QCDs allows us to still capture the standard and elderly deductions that the government gives us. 
I'm going to so, rephrase that. I'm going to yep. pull a Kirk and rephrase yep, that. Please. So QCDs are an above the line deduction. That is really important because yes. that means you get your standard deduction and you get your QCD deduction. So I'm going to rephrase it. You get the government's rephrase 30. Rephrase my rephrase. Yes, sorry. <laughs> you get your 30 that the government gives you and then now anything you give to charity comes off of your AGI which then reduces your taxable portion of Social Security, which then reduces, may reduce your capital gains and dividends, mm -hmm. reduces Medicare, domino, pull one lever, four levers, move, right? So, but, but I, I, I still think we're not clear. We use QCDs often to send some or all, some or all of the required minimum distributions that whether you want them or not, you have to take. So some of you who are philanthropic, who like to give to charity or have no beneficiaries and everything's going to ultimately go to charity when you die, we will take some or all of your RMDs and send it directly to your charities, plural of choice or singular if you want. And as long as we process it properly for you, you aren't going to have to pay taxes on those RMDs and the snowball of tax benefits occur, mm -hmm. right? And for a lot of people, we can replace the income we're donating yes. with after-tax money or Roth, Roth money. money. That's so exactly right. we're sending you the tax favorable, favorable money to spend. You're donating the taxable money. It's a huge tax win. Michael, that's so awesome you said that because how many of our people who say, are, they don't care about legacy. Some of them don't have anyone to leave the money to mm -hmm. um, or they just don't care about legacy. So let's... Q, and this is what we do a lot of times. Why don't we QCD your RMDs and do what Michael says, pull money out of the Roth accounts, which we did when you were younger, and out of your non-IRA accounts to live on. So you're going to pay little to no income taxes. And you're going to be able to give to charity while you're alive, not once you're, de you're dead, but while you're alive so you can be involved and get the tax benefit. Mm -hmm. It's a remarkable strategy, very powerful we utilize it a lot in our planning. There is a disconnect from us planning it and you guys executing it. And here is where that becomes an issue, is because especially if we are QCDing someone's RMD, if we are, it's a lot of acronyms, <laughs> if we are donating someone's required minimum distribution, Good. here's the issue, is that let's just say we built the plan five years ago and we assumed five years down the road instead of you receiving your required income, you're gonna donate it. Well, if you never gave us instructions on how to donate that money, you've been receiving it. You're All, gonna get the, we have to send you your RMDs. We have to, and we can't miss that. So we can't take that chance. So if someone contacts us in December, December of 2023, and says, I forgot in this, in this very first year of my RMDs, I was gonna donate my entire RMD to a charity, well, we already sent it to you throughout the course of that year. Yeah, you missed it. You, 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 you missed it. I mean, you could still give to charity, but it's not going to help your tax benefit, your taxes in this year at that point anymore. It's not, it's, it's not beneficial at that point from a tax perspective. So ideally, we really need QCD instructions in the beginning of the year. Michael, we've done this show before yeah. to some degree, and we've done lunch and learns on this. Mm -hmm. And we have told people the rule, the policy is that you have to get your QCDs to us at the beginning of the year. And we've got some rules around it. You just can't send us 30 different charities to send money to as much as we would love to facilitate all those. We have hundreds of you that are QCDing in addition to the 280 Roth conversions and everything in all, I don't know, 260 of you are taking RMDs now. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on. So we limit the number of charities. It's a reasonable amount. And, but you gotta tell us early in the year. If not, most of you, not all of you, but most of you are getting monthly distributions out of your IRAs. And at this point, again, why we do the client event, I wish it was earlier in the year, but at least now we can get the remainder of this year. If you were scheduled to QCD, the remainder of this year, we're helping giving you some choices for charity. You can give it to charity and stop the RMDs and pay less taxes. Michael? And for 2024 forward, you yeah. can get this set up ahead of time. But yeah, right now, just set it up, yeah, right? So the problem, in, and it, there's only so many things we can do for our clients. We are really the a family office. That's what we're essentially doing for our clients. But 
not char we're, I like to say we're the family office planning without the family office services. We can't babysit and hold hands because we're not charging you $100,000 plus a year in fees so we can hold hands. And QCDs really are just hold, hand the holding. nature of how it has to be processed and how it's built into plans. QCDs are internally for us one of the hardest things to track. I think we're working on a system to we start are. tracking it in 2024, hopefully. We are. But right now, it's been one of those things where we just can't track down everyone and tell them you were supposed to donate that money and we just can't. We don't, we, 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 di we didn't track it at the beginning to be able to put it in workflows or activities. Mm -hmm. So that's something I think we're going to be able to fix in 2024 with all the, the software that we're been working at year coding and writing. I think we're going to be able to, but right now we, we are dependent on you. If you have QCDs in your plans to tell us that you want a QCD, and frankly, you should have some accountability. If you're gonna to give to charity and you're scheduled to give to charity, you should know that your plan is scheduled to give to charity, or you should know that I already give to charity and if I'm over seven and a half, uh, senior planning advisors, retirement education foundation, everyone has educated me enough to know that I can send these RMDs to charity if I want. So 100%, you gotta tell us. 100%. So Michael, the last part of QCDs I wanna make sure you talk about um, is the tax problems that we constantly are seeing. The tax preparation problems. Yes. And this is one of those things. So with a QCD, let's just use Fidelity for a second, just as the example. If someone's pulling $100,000 out of a Fidelity IRA because they have to, it's their RMD, it doesn't matter if it goes to your bank account, to a charity as a QCD, Fidelity does not track that. Custodians do not track no, that. No, they don't. So when you get your 1099 for that tax year, all it says is I took $100,000 out of my IRA. Right. That's it. So and Michael, so if you're doing your own taxes or you have not our CPA uh, doing your taxes, they have no way to know there's a QCD. There's no trigger. There's no indication. Mm -hmm. There's no. So some of you have been doing QCDs and no one's ca catching it. Frankly, it's why. Because they were not using Don. Well, they weren't using Don. And even with Don, there's still, there's some disconnects. And this is why we finally said enough. We're, we bought the CPA. We're bringing it in house. They're going to have fully integrated into all mm -hmm. of the most recent updated plans. We've begged you guys stop having us do plan updates because now Don has the original plan, not the fifth plan that we've redone for you. And there's errors and mistakes missed. He doesn't know you were QCDing on the original plan. The new plan shows the QCD mm -hmm. or what you were Roth converting. So this is why we're bringing in house. And this is why we're requiring all of our clients, once they start taking income, once we start implementing the plans, a triggering event, they have to use our CPA because there's so many mistakes. We had 2,500 calls in March and 2,500 calls in April. 2,500 calls in the month of March. Just over tax questions, Ta document tracking. We are not a call questions, center. CPAs had questions. It was, it was unsustainable. It was That's crazy. why we're requiring this to bring in and eliminate all these, these mistakes. So, so um, tr the, the, to narrow down what we're trying to tell you with QCDs, that yeah, yeah, the, the, whoever's preparing the taxes have to indicate it's a QCD. The fidelity's not, no one's sending you documentation saying it was a QCD, you're gonna get a normal 1099. You have to notify the IRS it's a QCD, and then if you need something for your records to prove later down the road, and you wanna keep it for your records, it's in your statements. In your statements, it's gonna show the distribution and where it went, and then you have it for your records. In the statement, not the 1099. Correct. Yeah. And no one's looking through that end of the year statements. <laughs> yeah. No one is, but it's there if you got audited, so then you have proof. That's all you need. The tax preparer just needs to indicate, oh, of the $100,000, there was a QCD of 50,000. But a lot of people are missing this, Michael. And that's why we're plugging Don into the system here, but to make all this much more seamless and easy. Yes. So let's, ta let's tackle- Same thing with Roth, by the way. I, I don't want to get a tangent, but we, keep, we talk about bringing Don in and forcing mm -hmm. people to do it. I think people get a little defensive. It's also uh, uh, Roth conversions. It's also what capital gains we're recognizing in the year people are retiring. Quarterly estimated payments. Well, that's the quarterly estimated payments, the penalty proof. Them. They, they don't realize, people don't realize that they withheld the year prior while they were working. Now they 
the penalty proof, they're going to have to send in quarterlies, and we're not withholding when we're recognizing capital gains, mm -hmm. and there's no withholdings on Roth conversion. I didn't want to confuse people, but there is a reason we're forcing you to use Don. There's a reason we're bringing this in-house, in addition to when someone dies, the confusion and mistakes that are occurring yeah. for surviving spouses. We're bringing this in-house to for you. It's not just for us, it's for you guys. Sorry. So this, this quick impromptu rundown is now almost a full-length rundown. I'm sure yeah. it's going to be when we're done. Let's tackle charitable trusts uh, briefly, if we can. Charitable trusts, I, it, these are really complicated instruments. So I'm gonna give a basic overview because it's not a ton of our clients, but we have enough of our clients that we're utilizing these strategies. And frankly, we're using them more and more because some of the IRS AFR rates are in our favor. So the, the tax benefits are huge now. Quick overview. You, quick overview. <laughs> you know me. Anything quick? So a charitable trust. And for you guys at home that have these, this could be a CRAT, Charitable Remainder Annuity Trust, a CRUT, Charitable Remainder Unit Trust, NIM CRUT, FLIP CRUTs. For the purpose of today, all the same thing. You are going to take something that is highly appreciated, something that has gone way up in value. So it could be in your investments, it could be building rental properties, a business. And you take those highly appreciated big tax liabilities and you're going to donate it and transfer the ownership into your own charitable trust. And when we donate that to your own charitable trust, now we have none of those capital gains. We don't have to recapture the depreciation at all. At that point, it's in this charitable trust. And now this charitable trust with those dollars in them will then begin to produce an income stream for you, the donor. The money comes to you. Income comes to you for a period of years, depending on the strategy. For some strategies, it might be 10 years. It could be 15 years. It could be 20 years. There are some even for their lifetime. Mm -hmm. When that period of time that was scheduled to send you payments ends, when it's done, whatever remains in that charitable trust will then go to the charities you have selected. Right. Okay. The advantage of doing this is we don't have to pay taxes on those highly appreciated investments that you put in the charitable trust, plus we get a very large charitable deduction up front for that gift into your own charitable trust. Now I get to use the deduction, not in 20 years or when you die, I get to use the deduction right now to help offset other capital gains or some of your Roth conversions. Similar to a DAF. Similar, similar to a DAF. Similar but we, to an upfront DAF deduction. With a little more flexibility because it lets us spread those deductions over a period of years, mm -hmm. a year plus five years. So more flexibility, more Roth conversions, uh, or longer spread out Roth conversions, maybe not more, but spread out, could be tax advantage. Mm -hmm. So great strategy. Now, the reason we're talking about this for the people who have these and those people who own rental properties or businesses or commercial properties don't sell call call us we need to talk about if there's a better way to minimize taxes for you right because think about it 20 years of income the income's usually between five and seven percent you're getting all the money back plus you're getting the charitable deductions you get to remove it from the state we get Roth conversions there's tons a, of benefits it's a for the right situation is a huge win Huge, huge win. That's why we do them. But the thing, the homework I want you guys to do that have those strategies, you need to go to Mark, your estate planning attorney, Mark Wander, and double check your beneficiaries on your charitable trust, on your charitable trust. Who are your beneficiaries? That What charities are your beneficiaries? And is that still what you want them to be? For many of our clients, we tell them to make their donor advice fun to be the beneficiary of their charitable trust so that mm -hmm. they then can give it away and control it because who knows, things can change with charities. We would encourage you to start, if you have charities listed, to start maybe dividing some of this. You can say, I want 10% to go to this charity, I want 5% to go to this charity, but 30% to this charity. The advantage of doing that, and again, why we have our client events, if you said, Oh, I want to get Hu give Hubert Payne's foundation or Jalen Rose foundation 10% of my charitable trust when I die. And your charitable trust is going to have uh, $500,000 when you die. That means Jalen Rose's foundation is getting $50,000. Or if you said 20%, they'd get $100,000. Mm -hmm. Now, now Jalen Rose's foundation knows that you are going to, when you 
when, when you die or in 20 years, whatever the term is, your, those dollars are coming to that charity. Now they're going to plug you into the charity. You get involved. You can see the impact these causes have on their communities mm -hmm. and the people they're helping. It's a massive win, but I want you to double check those beneficiaries. And if you want to change those beneficiaries, that's another opportunity at the, uh, our, our client event that you're going to be able to list and divide some of that money up to some of these charities. 100%. Okay, Michael, I know it's really long. I, I want you to know that for Jessica and I, I would imagine we are going to utilize, we're utilizing some of these charitable strategies already and have for many, many years. And throughout our lifetime, we'll utilize probably just about every one of these strategies. And I know, I, I can, first of all, it is incredibly rewarding giving, we have given millions of dollars away to charity and it is so rewarding but really impactful to our kids we've done this intentionally so our kids who have had the privilege of living a really wonderful life because of our success we want to make sure they understand the importance of giving back we've all done really well so in our beliefs we should be giving back and so we're teaching that to our children and it has changed our family it I think makes my children less spoiled, I, I hope, less entitled, I hope, and, and more compassionate, I hope, to see all the people that are struggling, suffering, and how we can help and make an impact. And that's one of the reasons why we do this charitable event, and we're trying to introduce you to different causes that you have said would be important to you. And that is really helpful. I mean, I catch myself, I know my life is the spreadsheet, the numbers, and the tax benefits, but I need to remind myself there are real there are amazing causes behind the screen, this behind the spreadsheet that I'm staring at. There are amazing yes. causes that we're supporting behind the scenes here. That's true. All right, Michael, thanks. I hope this is helpful. We'll talk to you soon.